Before we get started, I want to thank our sponsor for today's video, and that's Skillshare. <laughs> Welcome to Comprehensive Color Blending 2. If you took Comprehensive Color Blending 1, you know that that class was all about the lighting. And I told you, color doesn't matter. Well, in this course, color matters. And I'm going to blow your minds when it comes to picking your colors. And hopefully by the end of this course, you will be able to recognize any color from any pencil set and be able to put them all together. Like any class, we're going to start out with a little bit of color theory. I, 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 I know half of you have just reaching for your mouse button and you are going to click right off. You'll be back next week when we get to the good stuff. But I promise today I'm going to set your brains on fire and then I'm going to put them out. Before we start color theory, I'm going to give you a test. I want you to look at the two dots on the screen. Tell me what colors they are. You guessed green and blue. Well, what if I told you that they're not green and they're not blue? They're actually yellow and green. You're, now you're saying to yourself, this woman is nuts. Well, we're about to learn why those colors are not the colors that you were taught as a child. I have something to show you that you're probably never going to color without again. How many of you guys own a color wheel? Or a better question, how many of you guys use the color wheel that you own? Not many. If we get too far into this video, I would like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring it and tell you a little bit about their platform. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions of people come together to make the next step in their artistic journey. There are thousands of classes that you can choose from in topics such as fine arts, creative writing, graphic design, photography, and more. Lots more. In fact, there are thousands of classes to choose from. Skillshare classes combine a combination of both a video lesson and a class project. These classes are designed to fit your schedule and your skill level. Members get unlimited access to thousands of inspiring classes with hands-on projects and feedback from the community of millions. Most classes are under 60 minutes with a short lesson that fits any schedule. If you like art series classes like I do, there are hundreds of great artists on this who are also teaching realistic coloring. And if you decide to sign up with Skillshare, it's under $10 a month. 1,000 to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. In the first class of the new series, I'm going to take you back to the beginning so that I can keep everybody moving along in the same direction at the same time. Some of this you will have already known. You may have taken my last uh, series, the Comprehensive Color Blending one, or you may be more advanced and have been coloring for a while and dealing with your pencils. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up your pencils. It does not matter if you are using Prismacolor, Caran d'Ache, Markart. It doesn't make a difference. Deli pencils, they're all the same. You set it up all the same. What I like to use and what I have been using probably my entire coloring life is the 18 color color wheel. Now there's a lot of different ones on the market. I'm not recommending any other one except for this one. The other palettes and uh, wheels are set up for paint. The color mixing magic palette, which is the one that I have underneath, this is for paint. It has very little use in colored pencils. I've got another one here, the Rainbow Color Selector. This is a little bit better, a little bit like this, but not as good. So I don't recommend it. Um, and then I, there's various other ones that you can have. They have very little to do with colored pencils. It may tell you rudimentally that you can mix two colors and it'll create another color, but it's not going to help you identify your colors. This wheel, and it's the autonomous, is the one that is going to help you with colored pencils. Now, 
You can see that my top is off. I did this on purpose. This is a regular color wheel. When you get it, it will spin. You will have these little slots. It has a little, if you mix this color and this color, you get this color. That's great. It's useless. This has two sides. The second side has another one of these. I ripped it off because it was in my way. This is what you want. This is the 18 color color wheel. Um, if you're using a nine color or a 12 color, it's not as good. The best one is the 18. So I will leave a link in my description where you can get this. They're available on Amazon. They're about $10. One color wheel will last you your life. Uh, after this, I'm going to probably laminate mine because it is like kind of like cheap cardboard, thin cardboard, and it can get scratched and dirty. So I'm going to probably laminate mine. This color wheel will have two sides. One side has the colors for tint, and the other one has the colors for tone. On the outside, you will have green, blue, blue, violet, blue, blue, violet, violet. These are the names of the color groups that you will be working in. Why do you have to identify your colors in whatever set you have? Because we're gonna be working with analogous trios. Now, we went into a lot about anal analogous trios in the other course. They are important. They are the colors that are going to bring your pictures to life. When you choose them properly, you need very little hardcore blending with your hand. We're going to be working now in mostly oils. Oils do not blend the same way waxes. You're not going to be creating all the colors that you did before with your wax pencils. Basically, oil colors go down and they go down where you put them and it does not change. You can't smear them around the paper. This is why it's very important that you pick the right colors initially and set your set up so that they're in the right order. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this and what I did for my prismas, I just have them in the book and I wrote down the number and it's all in the order that we need it to be in. If you've been following my channel, you know we're coming out with a set of pencils. They will be already in your analogous trio order. I did it for you uh, because I think it's that important. When you mix two colors together, what colors are creating that upper color? On here, we're going to look at the blues. We've got blue, violet blue, blue violet, and violet. So what is the difference between violet blue and blue violet? Isn't it the same? No, it's not. This is how I derived the answer to the test I gave you at the beginning of this video. Let's look at the green and the yellow because I actually gave you that one. This is the color I put up on the screen, green yellow. Then we have yellow and then we have yellow green. Green yellow. Yellow is your base color. Word next to it, green, is what they mixed into it. So your base is yellow and your mixed color is green. And that's how you get all of this. Now compare it to this color. These are two different colors. This starts out with a base of green. They added a little bit of yellow into it and they got this color. So you see the difference? This base is yellow added green, you get a lighter green. This base is green, you added yellow, you get a darker green. And then it goes on to the solid color. Then you've got green blue. You've got a base of green. And you added in a little blue. And look what you have, all your aquamarines. Okay, that's aquamarine. And I put, I put it up on the screen is green with a little bit of blue added to it. Now you have your darker colors. You have your blue greens. That's your blue with green mixed in and it's darker. All right, how are you going to know all of this? You're just gonna take out your wheel. You're gonna take your wheel, you're gonna take a color pencil. We're gonna take this color and we're gonna swatch it. Okay, I'll give it two coats. You're going to line it up against your colors. Now, it could be a blue, a green blue, 
or a violet blue. So we're going to look at where it fits. See how it doesn't completely match this color? This is greener. This is bluer. We're going to move it to the blue. Here it is. It's an exact blue. In fact, what color is this? Does it have a name? No, it's a Deli pencil. Okay, it doesn't have a name on it because Deli only has numbers. I would put that in blue, a blue category. And you're going to take and you're going to do this for every color in your set. You're going to make little piles of what each color is. Then you're going to just take it, put it down as dark to light. Or if you like light to dark, does it make a difference? It's your, your setup. And you're going to see by following this, you're going to be able to set up your entire bunches of pencils from every group. Now, why is this important? Because we're going to be creating analogous trios. And that's what we're going to talk about in another video. I'm just showing you how to use this and how to set up your pencils. Now, another use for this, which is what you're going to use this for, is when you're using a reference picture, and I can't tell you how many people have asked, who have sent me emails, and I never mind doing it for people, asking me to identify a color. What color should I use for this color? All you have to do is the same thing. Get this out, put this against the picture. When you finally match it up, okay? Say it's a red violet, it matches up nicely with your red violets. You know from your pencils what colors you can choose that have the undertone of a red violet. And that's very easy to do. You'll just match it up to the closest one and you got your pencil. Because honestly, I can you can say to me, what color is this? And I've got 50 sets of pencils. So what pencil from what set? You have to know your set and what colors come the closest to. So you're going to use this to identify colors that are in pictures, reference pictures. In addition to this side, you also have the other side. Sometimes your pencils will not match up with the other side. Sometimes they put white into your pencil color. Well, this is kind of a dark, I don't know if I have a, maybe I do have a lighter blue. Okay, here's an analogous pair at least. Very little effort to bring these colors together. And they're both oil colors that I used. But it was very easy to get this shading, okay? This would be in the picture where it dips out of the light. And we're going to go through all of this. This may be going a little bit far. And you've got the same blue that's on this side, okay? If you match them up, they're the same blues with a little bit of white added in. And it goes all the way down for your light. This will match every set of pencils out there. Sometimes you'll get a color that will sit right in between and you'll get that and you just make your best choice. It depends on the pencil, but what you want to do is match up to your sets. Any set, this is the one to get. It has other applications too that we will use in the future. This should be out on your desk at all times. It's very rarely not on my desk. Told entire courses on color picking and tonal value. Get yourself a grayscale value finder. Now I showed you in the last course how to create this, but this value finder here is kind of set and you never have to worry about, you know, things not matching up, being a little bit off. This is a great tool to have. They're dirt cheap. I'll leave the link to it. It's only a couple of bucks. You don't take it out of the wrapper because there's no reason to. You put it to find the value, and we're going to talk a lot about value. To find values of things, where does this match up? Well, this value is very bright, so it's going to have a value of about 9. Um, it wouldn't be 10. 10 is too light. 9 and 8 are closer to its value. Where does it start to disappear on here? We're going to be going over this tool and using it a lot. This course is probably going to last months. You're going to need your tools. And you're at a loss if you don't have them. So I don't want to take you too far 
today, before we start actually getting into the colors in my next videos, take some time and set up your pencils. The paperwork for this course is available in my Etsy shop. It is uh, the Comprehensive Coloring 2. Comprehensive Coloring 1 is still in the shop. Comprehensive Coloring 1 was about lighting. And I'm not going to be teaching so much lighting in this class because we're going to be doing some serious art. And the art is going to come from reference pictures that I'm providing for you. You can use other pictures, but this is what this course, when I'm teaching this course, we're going to be working from one specific reference photo and I'm giving you the reference photo. I'm giving you the black and white tonal value of that picture. I'm giving you the sketch of the picture. I'm holding your hand and then we're going to learn how to add the color to make that color, that picture look like it's coming alive. I chose flowers. Now, why did I choose flowers? Because in the techniques that I'm going to show you, flowers really give you the ability to make mistakes. Every flower in the world is different. If you don't get it exactly right, your pictures will still come out good. Even just by following my directions and you will get better each time you do it. So I will see you in the next class. Take care. If you have any questions, please put the comment put it in the comments below. If you're really lost and you don't know where to begin, contact me at my email address. I'm always willing to talk to you in private or look at your pictures or get you going in the right direction. Take care. Bye-bye.